Hello maths fans! Welcome to the sixth question from Tom Rocks Maths and I Love Mathematics, sent in and voted for by you. Thank you as always for voting and the winning question this week is how does modular arithmetic work? To start with, let's think about an example that hopefully all of you will be familiar with and that's going to be the 12 hour clock. So apologies for the, the circle but it was my best attempt and I have heard that if you can draw a circle it's a sign of madness so you know I'm quite glad that I, I can't really draw a circle. But this is our 12 hour clock and it's currently 9 o'clock so our, our hand is pointing to 9. Now if we let 6 hours of time pass, what will the time be? If you look at the clock it's, it's not too tricky, you know, you can probably all do it in your head. 9 o'clock, 6 hours of time passes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it goes to 3 o'clock. But 9 plus 6 does not equal 3. And that's the trick here. That's where the sort of underlying modular arithmetic that's hidden in the 12 hour clock sort of comes out of the woodwork. Because what we're doing with a clock is doing arithmetic modular 12. So that simply means that when you get to 12, you then start again. The numbers sort of wrap around and it looks a bit easier when you draw it out as a circle of numbers like this, like a clock. Because you just sort of go 9, 10, 11, 12, and then you start again. 1, 2, 3, and you keep going round. So if it was 9 o'clock and then 12 hours pass, the hand will go all the way around the circle and back to 9. So it's still 9 o'clock. But 9 plus 12, again, it doesn't equal 9 in normal arithmetic. And that's sort of what's going on with modular arithmetic. You, you have a set number, and once you get to that number, in this case 12, you just start again. You just ignore the fact that 12 has already passed. You're only interested in the bit beyond 12, or beyond multiples of 12. So let's think about the clock mathematically, so sort of from the modular arithmetic point of view. So 9 o'clock plus 6 hours, we all know, is 3 o'clock. 9 plus 6 gives you 15. So why is 15 equal to 3 o'clock? Well, it's to do with the fact that the clock is modular 12. Because you start at 9, you then add your 6, you get 15. But, importantly, 15 contains one group of 12. And so it doesn't matter that that's there. We sort of ignore that in some sense. It's not relevant. So that first group of 12, which is like us counting up the first three hours to 12, we just ignore that and we only care about the remainder, so the bit beyond 12. So in the case of 9 plus 6, you sort of go to 12 and then there's another 3 from 12 to 15. And that's why 9 o'clock plus 6 hours goes to 3 o'clock. And it works exactly the same with any other number and with any other form of modular arithmetic. So say we want to work out 9 plus 25 mod 12. All we're going to do here is add 9 and 25 and then think about what's the remainder left once you take out your groups of 12. So you can also think of it in terms of time. So again, if it's 9 o'clock and then 25 hours pass, we sort of know that there are 24 hours in a day. But that's just two lots of 12, so it's two whole sort of rotations of the clock by the hour hand. And you do the two whole rotations for your first 24 that you're adding on, and then you've just got one more. So 9 plus 25, in terms of time, will just take you to 10 o'clock. And it's the same with the maths, because 9 plus 25, it's just 10 mod 12. For exactly that reason that we just sort of went through with the clock. The first two groups of 12, they don't matter. So what you're sort of doing is adding 9 and 25 in the normal way to get, say, 34. And then you're thinking to yourself, okay, how many 12s go into 34? So 34 divided by 12, well, there's 2, and then there's remainder 10 because two lots of 12 give you the 24, and then there's another 10. So it's two and remainder 10. But this two, it doesn't matter in modular arithmetic because you've got two lots of 12, 
and we don't really care about them. We like ignore them. And so here, this two lots of 12, it doesn't matter. It's just the remainder being 10. That's the key in terms of modular arithmetic. That's the only bit that we care about. And so that's why the answer is just 10 mod 12. All of the examples I've done so far, of course, have been mod 12. And that's because we were thinking about things in terms of the 12 hour clock, which is mod 12. But of course you can use any number. So let's take 34, which is our nine plus 25. Let's think about what 34 is in say mod five. Okay, so we proceed in the same way. So like before we were seeing how many 12s go into 34. You just do exactly the same thing. So you have 34 and then you think, right, how many lots of five go into that number? Well, six fives would give you 30. And then there's four left. So the answer's going to be four. It's sort of, you're just thinking about it, like how many lots of your number, your five, your modular number, go into the number you want to work out. And then what's that remainder? So in this case, it's just four. And it's really quite as simple as that. It, it sort of sounds tricky and it looks tricky, I think, modular arithmetic, because it's a little bit different. But all you're really doing is just, you take your number that you want to write in a particular modular form, and you just say, how many times does the modular number divide the number I'm interested in? How many times does five go into 34? Well, it'll go in six times to get 30, and there's four left. Remainder four, the answer is four. And it works the same even with negative numbers. So let's look at minus eight. What is minus eight mod five? There are a couple of ways you can approach sort of trying to work this out if you don't see it straight away. So you can think, right, well, positive eight, for example, one lot of five goes into eight and there's a remainder of three. So because we're here thinking minus eight, then this would also be the same as minus three. And this is a correct statement. This is fine. This is completely true mathematically. But what we try to do in modular arithmetic is to write our answers in terms of the positive integers up to your modular number. So in the case of mod five, you want your answer to be either zero, one, two, three, or four. Like your clock, you're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way around to 12, and then you start again. You're doing the same here, but you're going from naught to four, and then back to naught. So rather than writing this as minus three, which of course isn't inside that naught to four interval we want our answer to be, what you can do is just add five until you get into that interval. So minus three plus five gives you two, and that does indeed lie between the interval of naught to five that we want. So here, the answer is also just two, and it looks a bit neater. And I also gave another little trick there in working that out when you're working in modular arithmetic, and that's to add the modular number over and over again to your number, or similarly, you can subtract it. So with a number like minus eight, you can just add five, because five, remember, is zero mod five. So it's like if you've got the number three and then you add zero, you're still at three. Well, adding five in mod five is the same as adding zero. It doesn't change your answer. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's, it's not really any harder than normal arithmetic that you've been taught at school or university. It's just, you have to just think a little bit more, but you're not really doing anything different. The operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, they all work exactly the same way. So you do the normal operation to get your answer. And once you have that answer, you then just convert it into the correct form by dividing by your modular number and working out the remainder. It's, it's really as simple as that. So let's do one final example, say seven times nine. And we want to work out what is seven times nine modular 21. So to start with, you just do seven times nine in the normal way. So seven, nine, 63. So seven times nine equals 63. And we want to know what this is modular 21. Well, 
you just get your answer and then you say, right, how many 21s go into 63? Well, 63 is exactly three lots of 21. So 63 divided by 21 is exactly three with zero remainder. And this bit here is what's key. The fact that there's zero remainder means that the answer here is simply zero mod 21. So have a go yourselves. Just take a simple set of sums, simple set of multiplications, and just try and convert them into modular arithmetic. Just pick a number and say, right, I'm going to work out these 10 sums in, say, modular 63. And the more practice you do, the more it will become second nature. And the more you'll realise that modular arithmetic is not really that much harder than normal arithmetic. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope I've answered the question. If you like what I'm doing, please do subscribe. That way you'll be the first to hear when a new video becomes available. And also be sure to check out all my material on my website, tomrocksmaths.com. And also you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Tom Rocks Maths. And I will see you next time with another answer to a question that you guys have voted for.